DFM, DFM rocks. Bula Minaka, I'm Linda Form, I started Suba. I love listening to Today FM because they play latest music and they rock. Hi, my name is Asnate. I'm from Ba. I love listening to Today FM. Today FM rocks. Bula, I'm a character from Nandi. We love listening to Today FM. Here in Nandi, it rocks. Hi, I'm Shania. I'm from Lotoka and I love the Today FM and it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. In the news tonight, fuel prices increase across the board. Moses Mbulitabu questioned and released. And Fiji Council of Churches condemns Mbulitabu's comments. From the studios of FBC Suba, Jackie Spade. Major increases in the price of motor spirit and premix will come into effect from Monday. Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission Acting Chief Executive Seneca Vika Chuta says the increases are due to the movement in international prices for petroleum and LPG products since the last quarter. Chuta says ongoing global trade tensions between China and the U.S. have also escalated, thus the increase. Changes in prices for both petroleum and LPG products is also impacted by the unfavorable movement in the international freight rates and the strengthening of the US dollar. So Fiji is directly impacted by the world market prices for both refined oils and LPG. As such, any changes to the world market prices will be reflected in fuel and LPG prices in Fiji. We now join our journalist Catherine Krishna live. Catherine, I understand it's an increase across the board. Can you tell us the new prices that will come into effect soon? Jackie, in a press conference this afternoon, the Fijian Competition and Consumer Commission has revealed major increases in LPG and fuel prices. Now, these increases will come into effect from Monday next week. Looking at the prices, price for motor spirit and premix will be increased by 18 cents. One liter of motor spirit, which used to cost two dollars, will now cost two dollars eighteen cents per liter. Premix prices has increased from one dollar eighty four cents to two dollars two cents per liter. Kerosene has an increase of eight cents and will now cost one dollar sixty two cents compared to one dollar fifty two fifty four cents per liter. Diesel prices has increased by seven cents and will now cost one dollar eighty nine cents per litre. Looking at the LPG prices, a 4.5 kg cylinder will now cost $13.46 compared to $12.89, an increase of $0.57. Cents. Price for 12 kg cylinder now stands at $35.89 compared to $34.37. Thirty-seven An increase of $1.52. 13 kg cylinder will now cost $38.88. An increase of $1.65. Looking at the price of bulk, it, will in, it has increased by $0.11 cents and will now cost $2.52 compared to $2.41 per litre. Now, auto gas price has also increased by seven cents and will now cost one dollar sixty nine cents compared to one dollar sixty two cents per liter. Jackie. Sudelpa MP Moses Mbulitavu was today questioned by police in relation to his Facebook post two weeks ago. A complaint was lodged against Mbulitavu by the Human Rights and Anti Discrimination Commission Director Ashwin Raj. Kuroi Tandulala reports. Moses Mbulitabu presented himself to the Criminal Investigations Department headquarters in Suva this morning. The police had uh, earlier uh, requested during the week if they could uh, come in today to come and uh, answer questions in relation to social media comments that was made by uh, Mr. Mbulitabu. Mbulitabu is not usually one to shy away from the camera, but on this rare occasion he chose to let his lawyer do the talking. Vosorongo adds his client has exercised his rights and they will wait to be contacted by police again. I suppose because it's in relation to the Public Order Act, it will require uh, the Director of Public Prosecution to have a look at the file. That's probably what's going to happen. Human Rights Director Ashwin Raj lodged a complaint against Bulitavu regarding his Facebook post that has been labelled as misogynistic and to be inciting hatred. Raj had earlier slammed Bulitavu for his comment, saying he should be accountable for what he posted and recognise the damage it has caused the nation. It gets us thinking about the fact that there was a lot of intention 
in what he posted. And that is why I think, uh, you know, it's going to be very important that law enforcement agencies take this very seriously. I think the, the moral outcry at the moment is good. But at the same time, I think the restitution of your fundamental right to be protected against hate speech through the force of law is what I'm interested in. When questioned by FBC News on the grounds of questioning, Bulitavu's lawyer, Filimoni Vosarongo, clarified his client is still under caution from police. Vosarongo says that since the matter is in relation to the Public Order Act, it would require the Director of Public Prosecution to look into the file. Korei Tandulala, FBC News. Moses and Bulitavu's comments are unbecoming of an elected leader. The Fiji Council of Churches has today distanced itself from what it describes as misguided and uninformed comments by the Sidelpa MP. Kritika Kumar reports. Fiji Council of Churches President Reverend Dr. Tevita Nawandra says Moses and Bulitavu could have better used his position and influence to denounce domestic violence and to promote race relations. Bring out uh, some positive uh, things to try and uh, help the situation if uh, it, it exists in, in, in those areas and in other parts of Fiji as well. Dr. Nawandra says that Fiji Council of Churches strongly condemns the racist remarks made by Bulitavu. We, some of us believe in the church that uh, we are trying to do our level best to, to bring people together, especially women and uh, and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, differences uh, that we have, like races and all that. Right? Fiji First General Secretary Ayaseed Kayum says the party would have dealt with the matter quite seriously if one of their members had made such comments. Said Kayum says Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama has always maintained his principled position against racism. Right from day one, right since 2007, our leader has always maintained a principled position. There's not a single instance that we have ever deviated, that he has ever deviated from those principal positions. And I can tell you that those, anybody would have even attempted to make such a comment would have been dealt with summarily. Bulitavu has faced stiff criticism from many sections of society, condemning his Facebook post. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. Real estate agents are again under the spotlight and this time for engaging employees who are not registered as a salesperson. The Real Estate Licensing Board has received 17 complaints against real estate agents this year and at least three are in relation to salespeople. Pranita Prakash with the details. Under the Real Estate Agents Act 2006, a salesperson needs to be registered with the Real Estate Licensing Board. This is a new trend that is coming up now. Uh, we have been uh, notified that the, the number of agents who are using uh, the people who are not listed as a salesperson with us, and, and they've been used to, to visit the pro properties, the property owners, negotiating the prices, and uh, preparing the listing for the properties, and, 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 and contenting, uh, contacting the owners uh, without having uh, a proper Authority form. Dr. Hassan says salespersons in the real estate sector need to be properly screened. The salespersons are not registered. They have not gone through a process of screening them in terms of their character, in terms of their knowledge in the real estate sector. So I want to take precautions to ensure that whoever goes out in field, they have that knowledge and a good character person to, to, to deal with the uh, prospective uh, vendors. The Real Estate Association stresses all agents and salespersons need to be registered. If they are not, Real B has the powers to deal with them. They can either suspend them or cancel their license, you know. But we want to work ethically. We want to work according to the law. Dr. Hassan says agents who are involved should cease such practices and follow rules and regulations. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Up ahead, mother found guilty by assessors and young Fijian awarded for bravery. Details after the break. Bula, go e minuni mereka rakyat untuk terletak di forum enam bulan FM namun dua resep. Mimbula, ayah wo meli, ayah wo titiu mai mata niway untuk terletak di forum enam bulan FM. Untuk tukar dia untuk bersiar suai enam bulan FM namun dua resep esok. Ini sambil berlakon lebih bintik, gonggal lumayan tahun ni lebih berapa? 
É um ango é muito simbólico rock rock é um do talita cá na varrão é nam bula FM. Bula FM. Nam bandua é na série. Bula FM nam bandua é na série. Three silver high court assessors have found 35-year-old Rosalind Razia Khan guilty of one count of murder. The assessors returned with their opinion this afternoon following a lengthy summing up. On May 6th last year, Khan allegedly drowned her four-year-old daughter after driving her car off the road near Kasavu Nausori and then jumping into the Rewa River with the child tied to her. The high court judge will deliver his verdict next Tuesday. The Fiji Development Bank has welcomed the 2019 Finding Balance Report commissioned by the Asian Development Bank. FDB CEO Mark Klaus says some of the findings of the report was a pleasant surprise to see how compliant the FDB is in comparison to other international examples of outstanding development banks. Maggie Boyle reports. The ADB report reviewed eight years of financial statements of 13 state-owned development banks across 10 Pacific Island countries. Effectively, we are compliant with most of the recommendations they are making for Pacific Island countries, the development banks. Um, so uh, we are doing things like independent boards. Um, we are focused on addition additionality, as ADB calls it, where we focus on parts of the economy, parts of the banking sector that the commercial banks don't address. While FDB rated highly in comparison to other banks, there's more it can do to better itself. It's about providing the right structural foundations in terms of adequate capital, uh, having these banks appropriately regulated. Uh, FDB is not currently regulated, but there's a very strong case for it to be part of the formal financial system. Regulation, that, that's really not the decision of FDB. It's really the decision of uh, the government. The, um, uh, the RBF and the board. But we, we can't have regulation just for regulation's sake. The FDB overall happy with the report. While there are several recommendations to make the bank better, they say they will consider it a financial institution, adding though for now they will pat themselves on the back. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Natovi Jetty in Thai Level North will be one of the major focuses for the infrastructure ministry this year. While visiting the site, Minister Responsible Chonio Sumate says the jetty needs more manpower to ensure the safety of the travelling public. Sainian Imboila reports. On the Natovi Jetty, will... Natovi Jetty is a key link between the two main islands and apart from upgrading the facilities, the government wants to enhance services as well. Natovi Jetty is becoming a very, very busy jetty, so we need to have a uh, better presence of MSAF. On the Natovi Jetty, we're looking at the site where they build their, um, their office at the top and uh, places also where the officers might be able to sleep while they're there. Currently, we have officers in Natovi who work 24 hours and then they go home away for 48 hours and so forth. So that's one of the areas that we looked at. The jetty facilitates cargo and passenger ferries linking Viti Levu to Ovalau, Bono Levu and Lomai Viti. Also part of Usamati's site visit is the new submarine water project site, which will transport water to the Kamba Peninsula. The water that is being taken across from Hoidoka across to Kamba, to the Kamba Peninsula. That will be, uh, it's actually a it's submarine. The pipes are already being laid, almost completed going across the water to the Kamba Peninsula. The one day tour was also an opportunity for villagers in the central division to raise issues with the minister regarding electricity and water access. Sainia Nimboila, FBC News. Fifteen outstanding Fijians were bestowed honours during the investiture ceremony for the 2017-2018 honours roll this morning at the State House. His Excellency, the President Major General Retired Chiochi Kondrote, congratulated the recipients for their achievements and reminded them that this should be a proud occasion not only for themselves but also for their families and friends. Edwin Nunn reports. And Mr. Emosi Idelembatiki. 20-year-old Emosin de Laimbatiki was the youngest on the honors list awarded with a bravery medal. Myself, I'm not, uh, in my dream to receive this kind of awards. And I want to thank my cousin. I want to you know, nominate me. 
At the age of 17, Emosi faced the worst of tropical cyclone Winston as he tore through Koro, but instead of running for cover, he helped save his mother, two sisters and his grandmother. He then ran out into the raging storm to help other villages. Many people uh, help them. They need help and they can run it. And I run after them and take them to the evacuation center. Now today is another opportunity to celebrate the distinguished and eminent services and the bravery of our fellow Fijians and our friends from abroad sir, for their selfless contributions to our beloved nation. Former New Zealand Foreign Minister Murray McCauley was awarded the Companion of the Order of Fiji. Nine Fijians have been awarded the Medal of the Order of Fiji. Kuroi Tandulala, FBC News. And now for the last time, I hand over our business segment to our very own Rachel Nath. Rachel has been with us now for over two years and will tonight deliver her last business report. On behalf of everyone, Rach, I want to thank you for giving us absolutely the best over the last few years. Our news team will definitely miss your presence with us and I just want to wish you nothing but continued blessings. So for the final time, it's business now with Rachel. Thanks, Jackie. Good evening, Fiji. Coming up after the break. New system to capture tech spares. And in going Fiji equipment to boost rice production. Stay with us. Hi, Bula. I'm Selai from Nandi. I love Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Hi, my name is uh, Sotiana here in Bar. We love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Bula, I'm Miri, I'm from Lotoka, and I love Gold FM because they play all my classic hits. Hi, my name is Fiona from Tavua, and I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. Hi, I'm Ini from Rakiraki, I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Leading business tonight, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service expects to capture taxpayers who may have been slipping under the radar once its new information system comes online. Chief Executive Vishwanath Das says moving to an electronic platform means taxpayers will be directly responsible for submitting their records. The new tax information system will see taxpayers use online portals for all business with the Revenue and Customs. So what we expect out of the system is that as it will support ease of doing business, it will also have an equally important impact in terms of tax revenues. So it, it, it will actually enhance the transparency of the tax system. So you know, uh, everyone who's supposed to be in the tax net will be in the tax net. Up next we have Sean with the latest from the trade market. Stocks in Asia traded mixed today as trade tensions resurfaced and U.S. shares closed at a record again. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell kept his focus on global risk that could trigger a rate cut in coming weeks. However, his colleagues from regional Fed districts painted a rosier picture of continued U.S. economic expansion and a solid business outlook. Stronger than expected U.S. inflation data tempered the prospect of an aggressive cut, but markets have fully priced for a quarter percent cut as U.S. policymakers seek to support a slowing economy. Closer to home in New Zealand, manufacturing activity rose in June thanks to a recovery in new orders, which ensured the sectors didn't shrink. And that's all from HFC Bank for this week. Vinaka. Thanks, Sean. On to today's exchange rates as it was set this morning. Once again, the foreign exchange market has shown its volatility. The Fiji dollar fell against the Chinese yuan as well as the US dollar, the PNG Kina, the euro and the Japanese yen, but our dollar gained against the Aussie and New Zealand dollar. As for the commodities market, prices were falling, oil prices dropped a few cents but remained over $60 per barrel. Gold fell over $13 to close at $1,409 per ounce and silver went uh, down about a dollar to close at $14.14 per ounce. Ending Growing Fiji tonight, the handing over of over three 
tractors, an excavator and other rice farming equipment will boost rice production. This comes as Permanent Secretary for the Office of the Prime Minister Yogesh Karan handed over the equipment to rice farmers in Driketi yesterday. Karan urged farmers to make use of the vacant land and plant rice to encourage import substitution. The land around Driketi is generally flat and well suited for production of rice. Here we have got abundance of land, but we are not making use of it. So we have to make land more productive. So this is the challenge I want to give uh, to all of you, that we must, we must start thinking outside the box and uh, rejuvenate you know, this uh, right, rice farming in this area. And that's a wrap from business for this week. Just before we head into sports, like Jackie mentioned, this is my last read as I'll be moving across to New Zealand. But it's been an absolute pleasure to bring you the FBC Business News for the last two years. Thank you for tuning in every single night. It's been my honor. For the last time, good evening and bye for now. Well, thank you, Rachel. It's been an honor reading news with you for the last two years. Uh, I wish you nothing but the best in your new journey, but I have to admit, I'm going to miss irritating you before in your news. <laughs> and you can't forget about me, Rachel. <laughs> we love you, and we will definitely miss you. Okay, okay. Enough now. <laughs> okay, it's back to you, Jamie. Let's, let's continue with our bulletin. <laughs> Good evening, up ahead in sports. Leotas win gold for Fiji. And Fiji men's sevens cruise through pool games. This and more after the break. My name is Neha and I'm from Karavi. And Mirchi FM, it's hot. We're Nasori se Mirchi FM is Julu. Hi, I'm Shari Pukash Bhatkata. Tava me Mirchi FM Stapkansen and Mirchi FM, it's hot. Hi, my name is Prashant. I live in Suva. I love Mirchi FM because Mirchi FM is hot. Hi, I'm Shane. I love uh, listening to Mirchi FM because it's awesome and it's hot. Hi, I'm Rachel. And I'm Shavi. We, we love, love listening to Mirchi FM in Lambasa. Mirchi FM, it's hot. Just two days ago, a father and son won gold for Team Fiji in Men's Rugby League at the Pacific Games. And today it was husband and wife in archery. Fred and Lisa Leota winning a combined total of two gold and one silver for Fiji. Akula Dama with this report. A moment for the Leotas in archery today as they won a gold medal in the mixed team compound event. That was, that was so close. We drew the almost the whole way. And that's the first ever gold medal I've won. So that was really exciting. And the fact that we did it together was really good. Yeah. Lisa had a better first two rounds, which boosted her husband to perform better in the later rounds. She shot the first yellow, the first 10, and I was like, oh, God, i got to get a 10 now. <laughs> and so she pressured me and uh, messed up a bit. But that's, that's why we have teamwork. So if I'm down, she can pick me up. Fred Liotta also won a gold medal today in the individual man compound, while Lisa won a silver for the same event in the women's category. Oh, it's uh, bittersweet um, to get my first gold medals in the country of my birth. Uh, yeah, it's been pretty good. It's special because I've got my family here watching and I'm, I'm really glad they uh, were here to witness the moment as well. The Liotas also had a chance to pose with the Samoan Prime Minister after the win. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Fiji Men's Sevens coach Gareth Baber is pleased with the performance of his new players at the Pacific Games. Fiji recorded three wins today. The first two were very convincing, accounting for Wallace and Fortuna 45-0 the New Caledonia 47-0. However, a very physical Cook Island side put up a good fight against Fiji, limiting their win to 21-0, which Weber says was a good learning curve for the side. 
Um, I think that the first two games we had pretty much our own way, um, and that can sometimes uh, give you a false uh, sense of where you are in, the, in terms of the tournament. I think the Cook Islands came out to play a very physical game in the last game. Um, but what was good about that, we didn't let it get to us. Uh, there were some off the ball incidents, uh, but we managed to hold the game together and obviously find a way through. And I thought we were probably good for another couple of tries in that one as well. Uh, we just got short on the touchline here. But um, now it's a good day's work and obviously looking forward to tomorrow. Swimmer Matelitum Won Romo has taken her tally to three medals for Team Fiji at the Pacific Games. After an emotional bronze medal finish in the women's five kilometer open water swim on day one, Buon Romo bagged two gold medals in the pool last night. Aquila Dama reports. Clinton Buon Romo says it's been a challenging journey for Fiji swimming after her double gold medal win last night. The meet's been going well so far. Um, I think this is the best we've done so far. We've had a, quite a tough couple of you know, years from the last Pacific Games trying to prepare on our own in Fiji. So this really means a lot for us. Uh, and we're just really, really stoked to be able to do it here. Buon Romo started the night for Team Fiji with a gold in the women's 200 meters freestyle. She's also part of the gold medal winning women's 4x100 meters freestyle relay team of Yolani Blake, Cheyenne Rova and Rosemary Rova. Buon Romo says Fiji's swimming had some trial and errors for a few years, but now their development plan is slowly bearing fruits. Yes, it is completely. Uh, there's uh, a lot more work to be done. You know, it was all a lot of trial and error for us. We're all based in Fiji, so um, I think this is just a huge boost and even more, means more preparation for us in the future. Juana Wind also won a gold medal in the 50 meters breaststroke event for Fiji last night. Aquila Dama, FBC Sports. Fiji has won its first medal in squash at the 2019 Pacific Games. The National Women's Triples team defeated Papua New Guinea two sets to one to win bronze. The national team lost to Papua New Guinea two days ago, but Makita Sokindi, Alison Moore, and Janice Chan turned the tables yesterday when it mattered the most. Team manager Frank Chan says the women have a chance of winning more medals. A lot of mind games happens in this game, so I mean anything can happen on the day. Uh, as far as the men's concerned, I mean we probably. Uh, not ranked as highly, but uh, we've got a good chance in the ladies. Uh, we have a number two seed from Fiji, which is our number one ladies, Elson. The Fiji men's football side lost 1-0 to defending Pacific Games champion New Caledonia today. New Caledonia's winning goal coming via a penalty. Fiji had earlier defeated Tahiti and American Samoa in the competition. Despite the result, coach Christophe Gamel was pleased with his team's performance. Even the loss, the loss, I'm very happy of the boy. It's the first time that uh, I hear the coach of Newcastle to kick out the ball, etc. Because we we have really give them a lot of trouble. Unfortunately, it's soccer. Sometimes you draw, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Pacific men's sprint champion Banube Tambakaldoro is set to light up the tracks when the athletics competition starts next week at the Pacific Games. Tambakaldoro had set the 200 meters Pacific record during the 2015 games and is targeting more next week. Tambakaldoro will be traveling to Samoa tomorrow with the athletics team who are confident their contribution will boost Team Fiji. It's been done throughout the year, uh, but this is the main one that we've been uh, looking forward to, so uh, just ready to go get up there. Now with the latest from the Pacific Games, Aquila Dama joins us live from Samoa, Mbula Aquila. Bulavanaka, Jamie, yes, um, uh, we have concluded day five of the 16th uh, Pacific Games. And uh, of course, after day five, uh, Fiji is now in fifth place in as far as the uh, medal tally is concerned. Fiji now have uh, 12 gold, 11 silver, and uh, of course, 15 bronze. But uh, New Caledonia is uh, still in the lead with 23 gold medals. The host Samoa is now in second with uh, 17, 17 gold medals. Tahiti is third with 13 gold and 11 silver just um, edging Australia who is in fourth place on the silver medal count Australia with uh, 13 gold and nine silver so Fiji is in fifth place after day three and uh, of course a few medals won um, moments ago as well from uh, the pool by uh, team Fiji and uh, again Matilita Mbonromo winning um, uh, two uh, medals in uh, the um, uh, swimming competition which uh, ended a while ago and uh, of course uh, when we look at it Mbuan Romo won a bronze medal in the 100 meters uh, freestyle women's freestyle she won a silver medal in the um, 200 meters uh, IM or individual medley and um, uh, the uh, mixed uh, uh, 
team event, the 4x50 meters um, relay. They won silver as well, and Taichi Vakasama won his second um, medal of the um, Pacific Games with a bronze in the 200 meters IEM. And of course, the um, basketball uh, between uh, the basketball match between uh, Team uh, Fiji, the defending uh, women's champion Fiji, and um, host Samoa ended a while ago, and Fiji defeated um, Samoa. And uh, also earlier uh, this evening, Team Fiji uh, defeated the um, uh, Papua New Guinea team, the um, Melanesian champions, by 78 uh, goals to uh, 58 in uh, basketball as well. Well, the um, uh, women's and men's sevens teams, both um, both um, uh, won their matches today, and the national seven side, the men's team, they didn't concede any point today, while the women's, they only conceded um, five points. So uh, they'll go into the um, knockout stages tomorrow as uh, the favorites as well, Jamie. Thanks, Aquila. Now, Flying Fijians coach John McKee has made some key changes to his squad that will face the Maori All Blacks tomorrow. McKee has introduced Waisea Nayade Levu and Levani Mbotia to help boost the midfield. Maria Begum reports. Waisea Nayade Levu says the move to the midfield isn't going to affect his performance against the Maori All Blacks tomorrow. What a new position for me. I've been playing there for a few, few games. Yeah. It's going to be a big challenge. Now the Levu says the team has been putting in the hard yards for this match and coach John McKee has faith in the selection. Uh, Weiss has been in, in uh, very good form at, um, at Stade Francais and, and, and Weiss gives a genuine option as a, as a centre or, or, or a winger. Having Botia added to the midfield according to the coach gives uh, the Flying Fijians more dynamics. Botia, you know, a very strong player in the midfield for us, you know, he's had, had some injuries which has kept him out of the flying Fijians like with his ACL injury, you know, last year. So, so you know, it's good for us to see Lapani back in, in the in the mix and and you know and just to have a good look at what he offers us in the midfield. Uh, you know. Meanwhile, the sledgehammer Aroni Sau and Patrick Osborne are out of the team after injuries and have been replaced by Filippo Nakosi and Kini Murimurivalu. The Flying Fijians are chasing a win against the Maori All Blacks at 3 p.m. tomorrow at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Faria Begum, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Flying Fijians received their match jerseys this evening from the president of the Fiji Rugby Union, Prime Minister Vorenge Mbainimarama, who also gave the team his best wishes. The Maori All Blacks visited students of Stella Maris Primary School in Suva today. The players performed a haka, sang songs, and played rugby with students who took the opportunity to take pictures and get autographs. Meanwhile, Maori All Blacks loose forward uh, Fetu Douglas says they're expecting a fired-up Fijian side at the ANZ Stadium tomorrow. Every year is a new year, uh, and every game's a new challenge. So, like I said, we'll just focus on this week. And uh, obviously, history is is good um, for our team values. Um, but you got to prepare the same. England are into their first Cricket World Cup final since 1992 after beating defending champion Australia in the semi-final yesterday. All Blacks and Hurricanes first five, Borden Barrett has signed a deal with the Blues. That's it from Sports Tonight. Uh, Andy will be back in studio again with weather later on and in new media. Check out the world's youngest recipient of a bionic arm. Details after the break. Radio Fiji 2 देश की धड़कन In new media tonight, eight-year-old Freddie Cook is the world's youngest recipient of a bionic arm. And it's weather time now with Angie. there and welcome to the weather world. Woohoo! Gladly it's Friday and the weather is in support. 
The games are on tomorrow. More on that in a while, but first taking a look in the West. So many activities to engaging. If you're visiting Fiji, then walking on your tan would be a great idea. Eastwards from back Havarasuva, sunny spells were active after morning showers. More showers are expected later tonight. And up north, slight showers will be around after great sunshine. I guess I would make a great local tourist. At sea, easterly winds 15 to 20 knots, moderate to rough seas. For the tides, low tide at 8.11 p.m. with high tide at 2.36 a.m. Sunrise at 6.38. For tomorrow, morning showers will be in the picture. So the flying PGMs are playing against the Mario All Blacks. What a sight to see. Just a note, carry your umbrellas. Tomorrow's temps, Lombasa will be warm at 32 degrees. And looking further on to Sunday, warm sunny spells for most. Have a great weekend. And that's all from the FBC Weather World. Jackie. Thanks so much for that, Angie. In Fiji and Pulse tonight, we asked, could Saturday be the first time that Fiji beats the Maori All Blacks in more than 50 years? I believe uh, in my heart, I want Fiji to win. And I predict it will be a very tough, close game. Fiji by four points. Find Fijian to win tomorrow because of uh, the people who they got, and I think the points would be 38 30 close match. I think Fiji will be 25, and that uh, the Maori All Blacks will be about 19 or 18, some, something like that. Yes, they can do it, Flying Fijians. I believe the Flying Fijian has got the potential to win the game against the Maori All Blacks tomorrow. In the world of the weird and wonderful, the bottle cap challenge is the latest craze to sweep the internet. Recapping the main stories for tonight, fuel prices increase across the board. Moses Mbulitavu questioned and released, and Fiji Council of Churches condemns Mbulitavu's comments. For these stories and others, tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. Our poll question this week we're asking... Should Moses Mbulitavu be disciplined by his party and parliament for his racist comments? Visit our FBC website to answer. And in our shot of the day, we take a look at a picture of the Suva Harbour, which was taken and sent in by Wethu Douglas this morning. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj. Share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. Follow and tweet us your news tips at fbc underscore news or hashtag FBC News. That was your FBC News for tonight. From the team and I, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Nandango Merea, Maramani Waya Manatuya Sawa, waiting to go to the Nandi, young Domarata, and never wrong on a radio figure. They are Asana the Tilly, our mother Monica. Don't go wrong of Alevon, a Doma Viti Lambasa. Bula, Nandango Prosan Garce, Goer Kraki, the Televio Navarro on a radio figure, no Domi Vit, Nandango Chani Vukia, Oman in Namus, and the Teleta Navarro. Radio Fiji One, Nando Mewiti Radio Fiji One, Nando Mewiti.